Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you to worship you on this Holy Sabbath day with hearts of gratefulness and joy. We worship this King of the universe. May we carry the name of Jesus wherever we go. And people will glorify your name because of our shining light through Jesus Christ. Accept our humble worship this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for a wonderful song. This morning's Bible reading is taken from Matthew chapter 25, verse 10 to 13. And while they were going away to make the purchase, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. Later, the virgins also came, saying, Lord, Lord, open up for us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Be on the alert then, for you do not know the day nor the hour. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Good morning and a happy Sabbath to one and all. Today is the 13th Sabbath, which is the last Sabbath of the third quarter. We are entering the fourth quarter next, um, next week. And next week we have the communion. We will begin a new uh, theme on God's grace to human weaknesses. So hope you can continue to pray for us, the preachers, uh, the pastors who will be giving the sermon. And today is the last of the series on Christ's object lessons and how appropriate it would be when you were to read Christ's object lessons, this parable of the ten virgins is actually the last chapter. And rightly so, this parable is actually the last parable in the book of Matthew. You will say, Pastor, it's not actually chapter 25 of Matthew has three parables, but they are all related. The first parable on, in chapter 5, of chapter 25 of Matthew is about the parable of the ten virgins, then followed by the parable of talents and the parable of the goats and the sheep. They are all related. And Jesus chose to tell this parable last. goes to tell you that this is a very important parable. You can all have all the other parables, but if you miss this one, you miss everything. So similarly, in the Christ Object Lessons, if you were to have a book, now those who do not have a book, never mind. Just type Christ Object Lessons. And then you type, you look at the content, the last chapter. So what I did was, I look at the last chapter, and I went into YouTube. It reads for me as I look at the PDF file. I tell you, it's wonderful. So it takes about 25 minutes to read the last chapter of Christ's Object Lessons. So this afternoon, while waiting for the bus to come, take time to read. Your life will be different. If you have your Bible with me, please turn with me to uh, Matthew chapter 25. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins. In other versions, it says, bridesmaid who took their lambs and went out to meet the bridegroom. Apparently, this is a very important event of their lives. Now the five were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. But while the bridegroom were delayed, they were all slumbered and slept. That is the parable. Okay? Now, these ten virgins or bridesmaids, they have four common traits. You can't tell them externally whether they are, they are any different. Number one, they all went out to meet the bridegroom. They all had lamps and vessels for oil. Number, four, number three, they have a knowledge of the scripture. And number four, they have heard the message of Christ's near approach and confidently expect 
He's appearing. Now, what is lacking? Something is seriously lacking in the five foolish virgins. For a time, there was seen no difference between them. So with the church that lives just before Christ's second coming. Now you know why this parable is so important. Because after studying all the parables, you begin to realize that Jesus is coming soon. But without this parable, you will be lost. You can be lost. You will be out of God's kingdom. Now, what are the, char- what are the char- characteristics of the virgins, the foolish virgins? Number one, they have no spirit of God. They have a knowledge of the scripture. They know about God, but they do not know God. They only have a theory of truth. They can study Daniel and Revelation and know about last day events through and through. They only have theory. They are familiar with the commands and promises of the Bible. They can even memorize scripture. That's all they have. The foolish virgins, they were not hypocrites. These were talking about two groups of people waiting for Jesus to come. They were actually seven-day Adventists. Why? Because they are waiting for Jesus to come. They kept the Sabbath. Why? They had the truth and the commands of the Bible. They advocated the truth. They were attracted to believe the truth. But they have not yielded to the workings of the Holy Spirit. They have not fallen upon the rock, Christ Jesus, and their own nature is not broken up. They know the truth, but their character is just as bad as before they were converted. In other words, they were no, there were no real conversion in their hearts. Unless the Spirit of God sets the, home, the truth home. Listen, unless the Spirit of God sets the truth home, the character will not be transformed. Without the enlightenment of the Spirit, men will not be able to distinguish truth from error. They will fall under the masterful temptations of Satan. Wow, very, very powerful. So what you know doesn't bring you to heaven. It's who you know. It is in a crisis that character is revealed. Both parties were taken unawares. They were expecting the bridegroom to come at a certain time. The wise one brought extra oil just in case. But one was prepared for the emergency. The other was found without preparation. They just brought enough. Now, I don't know whether you had this experience like me. One day, I was planning to go to China with a few friends taking a break. I had a connecting flight from Singapore to KL, uh, Singapore to KL, and then from KL to uh, China. I'm supposed to leave Singapore from 9 a.m., the flight time 9 a.m., and reach KL at 10.30. Okay, around that time. And then the connecting flight was at 1 o'clock. I thought I had enough time, right? Guess what? The flight from Singapore was delayed for one and a half hours. And by the time I boarded the plane, it was 11 a.m. And when I reached KL, you know what was the miracle? the pilot had full speed ahead. It reached KL, touched down at 11.45. By the time I rushed to the gate with my luggage, the gate was already closed. 
And uh, by the way, uh, the planes will leave at about, I remember, 1.15. Or rather, 1.10. I still remember, 1.10. By the time we check out, took my luggage, because it's not, because it's a budget, you have to take out your luggage, exit, and then enter again. 12.30, we were actually literally running, you know. Suddenly realized that from the departure gate to the immigration, it was like a one kilometer run. So it really tested my stamina. Dragged my luggage and running with my friends. My friends were way behind me. Reached the count, uh, uh, rather, uh, chop my passport, exit KL, and then come in again in a, to depart. Arrival, then come back. Then they say, uh, so sorry, sir. The gate is already closed. Now, what I didn't tell you was, I remember, I realized that the plane was late, so I told the staff for Air Asia to inform the staff in KL to wait for me. So they typed a special email to send to them, so they knew that me and my two friends will, will be late. But because I have this luggage, I cannot check in. I have to bring the luggage. But the luggage is beyond 7 kg and beyond a certain size, not allowed. So I went to the counter and asked for forgiveness. Asked for extra bless, uh, grace. I said, it's not my fault. But the staff said, it's your fault. You did not have an in enough buffer. Two hours is not enough. You must have at least four hours. I say, I'm so sorry. It's my fault. But can you please try? Then the lady said, okay. You tell the counter that I allow you. You, you tell the, the security that check your boarding pass to allow you to bring this luggage in and then bring it to the airplane and we have a special check-in for you. Tell them that. So I dragged my luggage together with my friend and told the security, who told you this? You can have special permission. Ask the person to come and see me. It was so far, you know. I have to walk there again and say, the security will not allow me. Can you please come? No, I cannot come. I'm very busy here. Ask him to come. I go there again and ask him to come. Please come. So the guy came. That lady said, allow them now just for this time. Walk there again. By the time I was drenched. Then drag the luggage. Went to the scanning area. They said, your luggage is oversized. I said, we have special permission. Okay. Then all these liquids, mouthwash, hairspray, all confiscated because check-in luggage cannot have liquid. Wow. Then by the time we have done everything, the stewardess say, last call. We are closing the gate. Then they call our name. And I remember it was 100 meters away. I heard my name our names. I said, we are coming! <laughs> so we run. We reach inside the door, the entrance of the airplane at 1 o'clock. The plane take off at 1.10. Praise the Lord, I made it. It was a very important spiritual lesson. I was just like the foolish virgin. On earth, I had grace. But in a spiritual sense, there will be no grace, right? I'll be lost. So now, a sudden and unlooked-for calamity, something that will bring the soul face-to-face -face with death, 
will show whether there's any real faith in the promises of God. Of course, the bridegroom delayed. They did not have enough oil. So what happened? The path from their preparation site to where they meet the bridegroom is quite a distance. They must have enough. They must have lamps that is littered. Of course, while waiting, the oil ran out. The wise virgins had extra oil. The foolish one said, Can you please lend us your oil? He said, Cannot. This oil is just enough for us. It will show whether the soul is sustained by grace. The great final test comes at the close of human probation when it will be too late for the soul's need to be supplied. So, just like oil cannot be shared, character is not transferable. No man can believe for another. No man can receive the Spirit for another. No man can impart for another the character which is the fruit of the Spirit's working. When, G, when Paul says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved, you and your household. He's not talking about transferring of character. He's talking about getting your relatives, your family members to accept Jesus, to, to be ready as well. So what is the application? The ten virgins are watching in the evening of this earth's history. All claim to be Christians. All have a call, a name and a lamb. All profess to, do, to be doing God's service. All apparently wait for Christ appearing. But what's the difference? Five were unready. Five were found surprised, dismayed, outside the banquet hall. No, in this life, they have not entered into fellowship with Christ. Therefore, they do not know the language of heaven. They are strangers to its joy. Why will they foolish? They were foolish because while planning to meet the bridegroom, they were busy with their own lives. Planning to meet the bridegroom is just one of the events in their life. It's not the main event. But to the wise, planning to meet the bridegroom is the blessed hope. It's the only driving force of their lives. They were waiting for this event. They knew in case the bridegroom was delayed, they have enough oil. The foolish, they were too busy. We cannot keep Christ apart from our lives here and yet be fitted for companionship in heaven. Are we like that? In fact, the Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. When, does, when do we keep the Sabbath? Actually, we keep the Sabbath on Sunday. We prepare to keep the Sabbath on Sunday. Then when Sabbath comes, we receive the Sabbath with delight. But many times we are so busy, we're running here and there, by the time the Sabbath comes, we become so relaxed, we forget. We do a lot of preparation like ironing, you know, get our things ready, cooking, we do not spend time in communion with our Saviour. If preparation had been done on Sunday until Friday, then when Friday, when Saturday comes, Friday night comes, we will be ready to meet the Lord. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23, it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. 
Away from me, you evildoers. We can do God's word using His name. We can cast out demons. We can make prophecies. We can interpret dreams, but useless. You are using it for your glory. All these are a form of righteousness, but there is no true righteousness. Therefore, they do not know how to trust, how to look and how to live. Their service to God degenerates into a form. It's just a shell. There's no real activity. We call it the shell company. A lot of people set up shell company to put their funds there, but there's no real activity. No employees, no business transaction. So, the Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5 says, In the last days, perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. Because all the things that they do, whether for the world or for God, is about themselves. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. And then in Ezekiel, it says about the same thing in the Old Testament. People may come to you, my people may come to you, as they usually do. And they will sit before you to listen to your words, talking about people listening to the prophets. But they do not put them into practice. With their mouths, they express devotion, but their hearts are greedy for unjust gain. Indeed, to them, you are nothing more than one who sings love songs with a beautiful voice and play an instrument well. For they hear your words, but they do not put them into practice. This world, a lot of people are seeking the truth. But that's it. They end there. They do not want to practice it. They want Jesus to be their saviour, but they do not want Jesus to be their master. They want to go to heaven, but they also want to live a worldly life. This is not true conversion, my brothers and sisters. If you were to do that, you are a foolish virgin. There's no Holy Spirit. And Jesus will say, I do not know you. You don't spend time with me in reading the Bible. You do not pray. You may be an elder. You may be a deacon, a superintendent, a Sabbath school teacher. But it's useless if you do not spend time to know about God. In the parable, the wise virgin had oil in their vessels with their lamps. Their light burned with undimmed flame through the night of watching. It helped to swell the illumination of the bridegroom's honour. Shining out in the darkness, it helped to illuminate the way to the home of the bridegroom, to the marriage feast. So the followers of Christ are to shed light into the darkness of the world through the Holy Spirit. God's Word is the light as it becomes a transforming power in the life of the receiver. By implanting in their hearts, the principles of His Word, the Holy Spirit develops in men the attributes of God. And that's the key. They have the attributes of God. The light of His glory, which is what? His character. Is to shine forth in His followers. Thus, they are to glorify God, to enlighten the path to the bridegroom's home to the city of God, to the marriage supper of the Lamb. The coming of the bridegroom was the midnight, the darkest hour. It is the darkness of misapprehension of God that is enshrouding the world. Men are losing their knowledge of His character. It has been misunderstood and misinterpreted. At this time, a message from God is to be proclaimed, a message illuminating in its influence and saving in its power. His character is to be made known into the darkness of the world. It is to be shed, the light of His glory, the light of His goodness, mercy and truth. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, 
let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. What are the good deeds? It's not a form, but it rather it radiates through the Holy Spirit. Let me continue to read if you have your Bible. Verse 6, And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go and meet him. All the, those virgins arose and trimmed their lambs. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lambs are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, less. There should not be enough for us and for you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the doors were shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. And then this verse says, Watch therefore, for you neither, for you know neither the day or, nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Now, what it means by keep watch? That's where the next two parables talking about how to keep watch. How do you keep watch? Those who wait for the bridegroom's coming are to say to the people, Behold your God, the last rays of mercy light and the last message of the mercy is to be given to the world. It's a revelation of His character of love. The children of God are to manifest His glory in their own life and character. They are to reveal what grace, what the grace of God has done for them. And that's why the parable of the talents come. God has given these three person five, two, and one talent. These five used the talent and it multiplied. It became five more. The other two, the other one used the other two talents and it multiplied. They have another two. The last one had one talent, said, Oh, I only got one talent. I better bury it, otherwise, I'll lose it. So, in the end, what happened? God said to the first two who had multiplied the talents and become 100%. God said, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter down into the joy of the Lord. He said to the last one, You lazy servant. Let's look at it. Verse 24. Then he who had received the one talent said, Lord, I knew you were a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But then the Lord said, answered and said to him, You lazy and wicked servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to those who have ten talents. For everyone who has more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the utter darkness, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And that's the end of the parable. And then Jesus went on to tell another parable, the parable of the sheep and the goat. This sheep, God said, inherit the kingdom. Be at my right hand. Be blessed. You give me meat. You give me drink. You took me in. You clothed me and you visited me. Let's read. Verse 34 to 36. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. So Jesus said, Keep watch. How to keep watch? Make full use of your talents for God's kingdom. Second, help the needy. 
Do community work. Pay it forward. When you do this, you are doing for Jesus. All around us are hurt the wheels of world sorrow. On every hand are the needy and the distressed. It is ours to aid in relieving and softening life's hardship and misery. God calls not only our gifts for the needy, but also our cheerful countenance, our hopeful words, our kindly hand clasp. When Christ healed the sick, He laid His hands upon them. So should we come in close touch with those whom we seek to benefit. I appreciate those who do community work. Uh, Sister Yuka, your health and com uh, community committee. You are doing the right thing. You are organizing the pay it forward, the fine dining with health message. The Cambodian volunteers who are doing missionary work. They are touching lives. We should do likewise. You want to hear another story about the airplane? This time it's not about me. This guy was transiting somewhere in, I think in India. A Caucasian man, well-dressed. He was uh, waiting for his flight. Then he saw a cafe. Special offer. Five donuts for three dollars. Wow! He bought. So he bought the five donuts and uh, he chose a seat with a table and sat down. He put his things on another chair, you know, got his newspaper and started reading. And then late, just a short while later, an Indian man with long hair, white, shabby looking, wear shorts, also came with a, a small hand carry bag. Then as he was reading, he took a glance of this man and continued reading. And then later on, he saw the Indian man took the donut from his uh, bag and start eating. He got shocked. Because this Indian man is an older man, he, out of respect, didn't say anything. Then he was said, how come people are like that? Just take without permission. Don't even ask. So he quickly took a piece and bite it. So both of them were eating. Later on, after both of them had finished, the Indian man with the long white hair took another donut. This time he was shocked. He, asked, he took my donut again without asking. So this time he, he, better took, he better take another one and start to eat. Then when they were ready to board the plane, the Indian man used his hand to grab the last piece. And he was looking at him. Something like, He did not say a word, but his body language says, said it all. He must be thinking, this guy is very desperate. But desperate is one thing, but how can you be so rude? This Indian man looked at him. You are well-dressed and you keep looking at me eating. Then, then he took this last piece and break it into half and give it to him. The man just took it. It's mine originally. He shoved this half of the donut on his mouth. And as he left, he was thinking, this must be a bad day. A special offer for Three dollars, five donuts. I only ate two and a half. So as he was to, ready to grab his things, he grabbed his coat. His packet of five donuts were there. He put it there. Then whose packet of five donuts was that? Whose was that? The Indian man. But the Indian man didn't say a word. 
when this Caucasian well-dressed man took the donut, he was saying, oh, okay, you need it more than me. You know, in, in our daily life, it will reveal our character, what we are made of, who we are. We are being tested every day. May we pass the test. Practical work will have far more effect than mere sermonizing. We are to give food to the hungry, clothing to the naked, and shelter to the homeless. And we are called to do more than this. The wants of the soul, only the love of Christ can satisfy. If Christ is abiding in us, our hearts will be full of divine sympathy. The seal of fountains of earnest Christ-like love will be unsealed. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Indian man with long hair value relationship more than right or wrong. But that rich Caucasian man felt he was unjustly treated and he was passing judgment in his mind. Oh, how shameful he must have felt when he realized that this Indian man was more righteous than him. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is coming soon. Are you the wise virgin or are you the foolish one? Only time will tell. And it will be revealed in our daily life. And may we, may we remain faithful until the end. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we know you are sending your Son, Jesus, to come the second time. Although we do not know when the hour, but we know it will be very soon. It's not important when He comes, but dear Father, bless us that we will have this extra Holy Spirit in times of delay, in times of emergency, in times of injustice, in times of spiritual challenge, to meet Jesus, when He comes, we know He is delaying for a purpose, but bless us with patience to wait for as many people to be ready as possible. Then we can go home. Oh Lord, we want to hasten Your coming by being fully prepared. And fill us today with the Holy Spirit, today and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.